Hello learners, I am Punita Malhotra. Today we are going to talk about constructivist approaches in teaching learning process. According to NCF 2005, ever since it has come, the focus from teacher-centered learning to child-centered learning has been seen. This shift from traditional teaching to constructivism is observed across all teaching learning processes. The teacher now from the sage on the stage has shifted to a guide on the side. More of a child-centric learning. Let us take an example to understand what constructivism and traditional lecture, how they differ from each other. Take the topic parts of the plant. In one case, the teacher explains the part of the plant by reading the text. This is followed by asking questions to the students. When the students ask these three or four questions, the teacher assumes that the class has understood. This is more of a teacher-centric type of learning. Take example of another situation. Here, the teacher teaches the same topic, parts of the plant, by dividing the class into groups. She gives a plant to each group and asks them to observe. They observe and infer. This is followed by discussion. Now, the teacher asks the students to draw and label the parts of the plant. The teacher here acts as a facilitator, helping the students learn about parts of a plant. But the students are at the center of the learning process. Case 2 is an example of a constructivist type of classroom, wherein case 1 was an example of a traditional classroom. We'll today look into how a constructivist classroom works and what are the different methods that we can use. Constructivism is a learner-centered approach. It helps the students to become independent thinkers. Learner-centered approach is based on observations and inferring on the basis of these observations. The curiosity of the child is at the highest point in a learner-centered class. The child thinks creatively and develops a habit of self-learning. Here, the learner enhances his problem-solving skills and develops ability to plan and execute projects. The role of the teacher in a learner-centered classroom is that of a facilitator. She has to accommodate different learning styles. The students can be divergent thinkers, they can be convergent thinkers, or they can have accommodative or assimilative learning styles. So, the teacher has to look into these different types of learning styles and devise a method in order to accommodate all these together. The interest of the child is also very important. So, the teacher needs to provide opportunity for each and every child to pursue her interest. The role of the teacher in a constructivist classroom is to develop learners into lifelong learners. The classroom is based on open and trust-based relationships. And the students have full opportunity to make decisions. The teacher here is an observer, a diagnostician and a facilitator. There are various learner-centered practices from which we are going to discuss a few today. One of these is collaborative group learning, another inquiry-based discovery, another inquiry and discovery, self based performance on contextual tasks, hands-on learning, problem-based inquiry learning and on-site field experiences are all examples of learner-centered practices. When we talk of constructivist approach or learning-centered education, here the student constructs her knowledge. She has the ability to apply concepts to daily life. The assessment in this case is diagnostic. The teacher is a facilitator. In learner-centered classroom, 
teaching and assessment are interwoven and the teacher as well as learner assess together. We will look into few examples of constructivist classrooms. Take an example of a classroom which is called a jigsaw classroom, like different parts of a jigsaw puzzle. The class is divided into heterogeneous groups. Suppose the topic to be taught is again parts of the plant. The whole topic is divided into subtopics and each group is given one subtopic. For example, one group is given the topic leaf, other group root and so on. The group which works on a particular subtopic is known as an expert group. This group works on that particular subtopic and collects all information related to the subtopic. Then the expert group presents the topic to the other groups. This is followed by discussion and questions can be raised to the expert group by other group members. So the subtopics are taken up by small groups and the whole topic parts of the plant is completed. Jigsaw classroom is an example of a cooperative learning classroom. The goals of cooperative learning are academic achievement of the child, the acceptance of diversity as the groups are heterogeneous and development of social skills. The key features of this type of learning are that the class is divided into heterogeneous groups and the reward is based on the group performance and not on individual performances. This ensures that each and every child participates. So the takeaway from cooperative learning is academic achievement of the child, cross-cultural understanding and a changed attitude towards disabled students. Because the group gets a reward only when each and every individual contributes. So if we want to incorporate cooperative learning into our classroom, there are different phases for doing this. In cooperative learning, teacher is, plays a very important role. In the first phase, the teacher presents the goal and the learning. In the first phase, the teacher presents the goal and the objectives of learning are set by the teacher. This is followed by presentation of the information. The third phase of cooperative learning is organizing students into teams. So heterogeneous teams are made. Each team now works independently, but the teacher assists the team and helps them in the study. Once this is done, it is followed by assessment or a test. And after the test, the groups get recognition for their work. So there are six phases in cooperative learning. The advantages of cooperative learning are the academic achievement of the child is enhanced. It is effective for all ethnic groups. It is effective for all ability groups. There is an increased self-concept and self-esteem among the team members. It ensures that students learn to work in a team and there are positive interactions because the students will be rewarded only when the group works together. There are also limitations to this type of learning. The high achievers often feel neglected and sometimes the teacher may find it difficult to implement this type of learning in the classroom. The next type of learning under the constructivist approach, which we will look into today, in order to start with that, let us look into an example. Suppose there is an inter-school project, again on plants. So students of two or three schools work together. They choose a topic, that is plants, as I've already said. And the students of the two schools compare the characteristics of the plants in two different environments, that is, in the environments where their schools are placed. For example, if one school is in North India and the other one is in South India, the plants will be different because the climatic conditions are different. So the students compare the plants characteristics in these two different regions and they come up with a project 
this type of an approach is known as a collaborative approach. In a collaborative learning experience, a group of students discuss a lecture or students from different schools work together over the internet on a shared assignment. So, it is not only inter-school event, but it can also involve students from the same school, same classroom working together. A student helping his peers to complete an assignment is also example of collaborative learning. The goals of collaborative learning are helping others in any area like homework, acceptance of diversity and development of social skills. The key features of this type of learning are the students work in pairs or in groups and the reward is for the group as well as individual performance. The takeaways of collaborative learning are cross-cultural understanding develops and there is a changed attitude towards disabled students. The advantages of collaborative learning are acknowledgement of individual differences, development of interpersonal skills, it actively involves students in learning and there are more opportunities for personal feedback. Cooperative and collaborative learning are quite similar as they focus on peer interaction and promote social skills in group settings. But still, there is a difference between cooperative and collaborative learning. In cooperative learning, the teacher is the central part. The teacher has a main role. While in collaborative learning, it is more child-centric. The group works together and they search for understanding. This leads to problem solving. Cooperative learning is more specific, whereas collaborative learning is general. Although both lead to social interaction, but in cooperative learning, the group as a whole gets the reward. But in collaborative learning, the group as well as the individual gets rewarded. The last type of constructivist approach we are going to discuss today is activity, like a hands-on activity. Taking an example would be, you need to make the learners learn about chemical reaction and they find it very difficult. So, you give them an activity to prepare a script for a movie and enact in the movie, taking into account all the chemical reactions that they have studied in the lesson. We'll see a short clip from such a movie now. So, you saw in the movie how the students have used chemical reactions and interwoven it into a story wherein their daily life experiences have come into play. In such an activity, the students enjoy working together and there is more learning taking place. Activity is an objective-oriented task where the learner gets spontaneously involved and derives pleasure in achieving the learning objectives. There are various types of activities that can be done in the classroom. Some of the examples are games, role plays, stories, songs or making a movie like we just discussed. The positive feature of activity is that each and every child participates. The activity can be an individual or a group activity. It may or may not involve physical activity, but it definitely involves mental work. An activity can be used to attain specific objectives. To make an activity effective, the activity needs to be focused. The objective of the activity should be very clear. And on the basis of the objective, the goal that is to be achieved, the activity should be designed. The activity should be challenging for the learners. It should not be such that the students lose interest. The activity should involve 
the students spontaneously. As soon as they come to know that today this is the activity we are going to do, they should all get involved. And an activity will be effective only if it gives pleasure to the student. So the activity has to be joyful. In the end, I would like to sum up by saying that using constructivist approach, you can transform your classroom. Learning-centered education focuses on the learning process with its primary concern on the learning of the students. Learner is at the center stage and the teacher only acts as a facilitator. So, dear learners, we have today learnt about various constructivist approaches, collaborative learning, cooperative learning and activity-based learning. Make your classrooms interactive and constructivist. Thank you.